Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. In this video, I want to clearly explain my Ether wallet. Now, it can be a little bit hard to get your head around if you're a new user, but certainly by the end of this presentation, I hope you're going to have a good understanding of how this all works. So to start off with, we want to make sure we're at the correct website. Now, I recommend saving this as a tab, myetherwallet.com. There's a number of phishing sites out there, fake emails, direct messages in Slack, the scammers are out there, they're trying to get you and redirect you to an incorrect website. All they need is your password and private key and they have access to all your funds. So to start off with, let's make sure we're always on the right website. The next thing I want to explain is how a wallet works. So an Ethereum wallet is a combination of your public address and private key. Now those two things together will give you access to your funds. And that's what my Ether Wallet is. It's a website, it's an interface that allows you to interact with the Ethereum blockchain. So that's the first thing that confuses a lot of people. They think they're logging into an exchange or an online bank of sorts and that their Ethereum lives in this my Ether Wallet website. That's not the case. Ethereum and all Ethereum tokens that are built on top of the blockchain, they live out there in cyberspace on that digital ledger blockchain and that's another concept that can be really helpful to get your head around that your funds they live out in cyberspace on that ledger they don't live on your computer they don't live on your hardware device what is stored is your private key and that private key is the only way to access those funds that live on the ethereum blockchain so if we want to create a wallet from scratch we're a brand new user we're going to have to create a password here at least nine digits now that's going to create a new wallet for us again that wallet is a combination of a public address and private key it's going to ask us to download this key store file to our computer and it's going to encrypt it with that password we just created so let's click on download that's going to send it to my downloads folder I can make copies of that file. Now I can send that to a USB, an external hard drive, and even delete the original copy so that it's offline entirely and not connected to the internet. Now normally guys, you don't want to share anything that I'm about to show you because this is all that um, people need to get access to your funds. So this is your private key. Again, I don't recommend in copy and pasting and storing this in a Word document on your desktop or anything like that. You really need to keep this stuff super safe. Paper wallet is another option. So again, this physical visual representation of a public address and private key. So the long string of letters and numbers there as a QR code and your private key long string letters and numbers as a QR code. Print that off, laminate it, put it in a safe, wherever someone is not gonna find it and gain access to it ever. So that's it, I've created a new wallet. That wallet is now on my computer. Now obviously, I'm not gonna ever use that wallet because everyone has seen my private key. So there's a number of other ways that we can access our wallet to access our funds, and that is what my Ether wallet enables, that interface. So lots of you will have a hardware wallet, Ledger, Trezor, or Digital Bitbox. Now at this stage, if you want to plug in your Ledger, you want to um, open the Ethereum application and make sure that browser support is enabled on your little screen, and all you're going to have to do is then click Connect Ledger, do your password, and that is going to access your funds. Another way is that key store file that we just showed you how to do. You're going to click on that, select that wherever you saved it, type in your password. Another way here is that mnemonic phrase, that 12 or 24 word backup phrase that some wallets will make you create as a second layer backup, or simply paste your private key. So that's why everyone's always talking about it's so important to safely store your private key. As soon as someone else gets it, they can access your funds. So today I'm actually gonna open up my MetaMask wallet. So I've got a wallet that lives in this Google Chrome MetaMask extension. So that, that's it there. And again, I can access that wallet through the MyEther wallet interface. So Ether or tokens, sorry, I'll just open that up again, connect to MetaMask. Now I'm gonna show you how to send Ether or tokens. So the next concept I want you to get your head around is that Ethereum and all those Ethereum tokens you know, Power Ledger, Horizon State, Zero X, a number of them that you may have even purchased already, 
they can all live under the one address. So you can store your Ethereum and all your tokens under the one public address. Now they're going to appear there um, if you have some, otherwise you they'll show up here as zero balances because I don't have any of them yet. Sometimes if it hasn't been added by um, the company, you'll have to add a custom token as well there. I won't dive into that. Um, I have made videos on that if you want guys. So if you want to receive funds or tokens from an ICO or from a, from a friend, this is the public address that you need to give them. You don't need your device or computer to even be online to receive those funds. They always live on that digital ledger on the blockchain in cyberspace, guys. So again, that private key and accessing that funds is what you're actually doing whenever you plug that in. So let's say we've got our friend's address and we want to send them some tokens or Ethereum. All we need to do is paste their address here. We want to check the last few digits. There's viruses out there now that will um, exploit your copy and paste function. So we're always double checking everything we do. The last few digits are correct. I can just type in an amount I want to send of Ethereum or any other tokens that I have in my wallet if I want to send them some Power Ledger or whatnot. I then can change that gas limit. That's for advanced users, guys, and it's got to do with network congestion. Don't worry about this if you're just an average user. There's also ways that you can change the priority of your transaction to make it you know, less important, or if you want to send it ASAP, you can send it a little bit more. So we always need a bit of Ethereum in our wallet, even if we're sending some Power Ledger, because we've got to pay the gas fee always in Ethereum. Another example here would be if we want to receive some tokens, so Shapeshift is a website a lot of you will probably use by now. It will ask you for your 0x address. Now our address is the same as our Ethereum address because it's an ERC20 Ethereum token. So we can paste our address there, our refund address in case something goes wrong for that Ethereum to bounce back to. Again, it's the same address. They're all living under the, the one address. So guys, I hope that's a nice introduction to how this all works. Again, those important things to know. Double check the website you're on. That concept of public address and private key, those combination of things is what makes your wallet. Thirdly, my Ether wallet is simply an interface to allow you to interact with the public Ethereum blockchain however you've got your private key safely stored. So guys, I hope that video has cleared up a few questions I've been getting. Please hit like, subscribe if you haven't already, share these videos around, and as always, thanks for tuning in guys. Cheers.